was looking for for Rick's truck. Just found it. All right, so we ran into a problem with our Nova. Um, let's go see what we got. Does anybody see this? Can you see that? What, what do what do you what do you think of this? Well, they got uh, spliced. All the wires are spliced, all of them. That's what it looks like to me. Can you see what's behind here? We got look. We got cobwebs and spider eggs and everything else. So um, if you look real close, uh, like. Many said these wires are spliced together, but they're taped together. That means that underneath these, the wires, I'm going to go ahead and take one off. And this is old tape here. This is cloth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take one of these. I bet you this is just twisted together. What are you thinking? Oh, boy. oh yes. There's your, there's your circa 1970 wire connection. What we have here is a situation that says this wiring is shot. Uh, first of all, this car is 62 years old. Um, I can't even get this to stay. Look what we got here. We got a spider egg inside the light. Do you see that? Let's see if I can get that out of there. That's actually a spider egg nest. There it is. Looky there. Looky there. Of course, the spider's already gone. You can see where he came out of his little cocoon right there. Oh, my God. I thought that was supposed to be in there. I thought that was a piece of white plastic. <laughs> I did. I thought it was a piece of white plastic and that the wire had pulled out of the hole. So we noticed that this here is junk. All these wires are coming out and loose. And, and then uh, I got down here because I had to buy a brand new pigtail for this. So the brand new wires that you see here, that's the pigtail that I had to buy for these. But then what the problem is that we got is when you turn the key on, the right turn signal is stuck on turn. When you go to do the left turn signal, it doesn't do nothing. When you put it to stop, it doesn't do nothing. Turn signal still stuck. Um, another problem that we had is where's the headlight at? Okay. So you can see the headlights old. Now the headlight does work, but it is a Tri-3 headlight, a T3. Do you see that? Do you see the triangle? Yeah. So this was a very popular headlight back in its day. Uh, matter of fact, people sell these on eBay for a lot of money. But um, this headlight is so dim that you can't even see any light. It doesn't even light up. Um, so this is my suggestion. Uh, you run down here and you can see the wire coming through here and then look at this mess. See all this? Yeah. And then of course it all plugs in the firewall back here. This is where that wire harness plugs in right here. Now the wipers work, we know that. The engine starts. So the engine harness looks like it's okay. And then when we come back here we got basically the same wire job. Do you see the tape here and here? And then another thing that you got is, look here, watch this. Watch what I do. Look. Now, take a good look at that. Do you see how brittle the wire is? It's broke. It's very brittle and very old. 
and that will of course cause a short if there's any yep. breakage along down along the and line. then another problem we have is we don't have any power going to this light at all the only power that we have coming to the back of this is the turn signal that's it we don't have any park lights in the back we don't have nothing so if I turn the key on watch what happens so we got a turn signal but now I haven't done anything the turn signals are actually you see it's what I'm doing. saying? It's just doing it by itself. It's doing it all by itself. It's not supposed to be. And then come on up here. Let's look at this. And you can see over here on this side that... Uh... Okay, so now, come on over here. I want to show you this. So we're actually in the middle. So that is, that's right. That's in the middle. Now we're going to go down to the left. And you see the turn signal still is on the right. It doesn't really matter what you do. It's it's a clusterfuck situation all the way. So we got the left turn signal on. Come on up here, and then you can kind of see what's going on. Now let's go ahead and do this. Turn signal is still going to work, but I'm going to go ahead and turn the park lights on. Now is that park light on? It is, but the blinker okay. still blinking. So we got the park lights in the front. And then, of course, we still got this turn signal fucking with us. Okay, so now come on back here, and we don't have nothing but a turn signal on the back, so there you go. So uh, come on over here now, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn the key off. That'll turn the turn signal off, of course. And then if you go up in the front, you can see that we should have our park lights. So our park lights are now working, but... Uh, but when you it's turn the key up. on, the blinker comes back on. So now I'm going to have to talk to the owner because I don't wire cars for free and I don't do it by the hour. I have a set price to completely wire. If the owner wants to fix the car and he wants to do it right, I will do it. But if he wants to do a job like it's already on here, I, I, I don't want to get involved. I, I want to stay out of it and then he can take it somewhere else or they can let they can do it or whatever but i just don't want to fuck with it if they don't want to replace the wire harnesses and they don't want to wire the car up properly um i had to disconnect the horn because listen to this let's go ahead so there you go so we know the horn actually is good but we got faulty electrical wiring in the vehicle. I'm going to have to remove the steering column to actually fix that issue. Uh, so that's why we're out on the Nova, but um, everything's going good on the Nova, okay? I'm going to let you know that. This is a beautiful car. I love the car. Um, we had to get the headers. Look what we had to do. We had to go ahead and put factory exhaust on it. Which I think is a good thing. Those fucking headers were trash. And, uh, I mean, it's coming together nice. I like the job, but this is the kind of action that says, you know, this is bullshit. And the reason I say that is because we're going into the domino effect situation of I just wanted my car painted. That's all I wanted. Now we're buying nine thousand dollars worth of stuff up on the wall here and brand new chrome trim and you know five hundred dollar grills and and lenses and and you know rubber it took me and many three hours to put the windshield and the back glass in this car last night so you're kind of getting the idea of what's going on um we have a good, and this is full days, we have a good at least seven, eight days in this car putting it back together. Yep. So, my plan was to get this thing out of the shop, um, but what we're going to do is we are going to, okay, so look at here, i got to adjust this, there we go, brand new rubber sucks, okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, 
talk to the owner and see what he wants to do. He wasn't too happy when I mentioned it to him. Um, when I first met the owner on this car, he said, how much do you think it's going to cost to paint it? I said, well, first of all, when you paint a car like this, uh, if you put old aluminum and chrome trim and all that, it's going to look like an Earl Shives paint job. Am I right? Oh, yeah. And it's going to look like you take it all off. So we decided, okay, well, we're going to go ahead and paint it. We're just going to replace minimal parts that it needs. So we went ahead and did all that, and um, then we went into, I wasn't going to take the glass out. I was going to tape it off because this was just a fresh, it started as a freshen up paint job. Is that what we're talking here? That's what it started out You know, just freshen the body work up, repaint it, go down the road. So then we let into, this car's been sitting around for 15, 20 years, and we got mechanical issues, so now we got to get the car running. So then we start replacing gas tanks and fuel lines and brake lines and emergency brake cables that broke. Then we lead into, well, the bottom of the car is rusted. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm trying to say here, moving down the line, is that when you work on a car like this and you think you're just going to go ahead and paint it, that ain't how it works. That is not how it works. You're not just going to paint the car, because even if you paint it, it's going to look like shit. Am I right or wrong? Unless you replace the stuff that's old and yucky, yes. It's now, going there's to look a lot of stuff that I didn't replace brand new, like, for instance, these right here. All right, I thought that these still looked really good. We're talking 175 bucks for a set of these. I'm saying, you know, they look great. We'll put them on there, and it, it'll look beautiful. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, whichever side this goes on, but we did order a grill. The grill was 520 bucks. The grills are obsolete. We couldn't get one, so that's the old grill. Um, you can see this is new. So I'm just letting everybody know that if you're going to restore your car, you better beware that it is not just going to be a scuff and paint job when it comes to these old cars. Um, another thing that you really need to watch out for is you need to watch out who you take your car to. If you get a guy that painted, paints it and he's got other work in his shop and he's fed up with your car, he's going to throw it back together. You don't know what he's doing to it. He's going to leave the wiring like this and get everything working and go down the road. He's not going to have uh, the motivation to um, do the job right. And then he's going to charge you for everything that he does on it besides, and that includes standing there smoking a cigarette while he's taking a break looking at your car. Am I right or wrong? Yep. So getting a car restored in this day and age is very hard. Okay, very hard. Um, I'm going to contact the owner. I'm going to see what he wants to do. Um, I know I looked up the back wire harness, if we were going to use the factory wire harnesses. I looked that up, and I believe it was $280 just for the rear wire harness. And then I haven't even looked up the front one yet. Uh, but the problem we have is once you start buying harnesses, I mean, the problem can be up under the dash. We don't know. Do you see what I'm saying? On a vehicle like this, I do not suggest to buy an aftermarket hot rod wire harness. I suggest that you get the factory wire harnesses and go to the car. But that's everything beside that. What the real deal is, is if you're going to restore a car and have somebody else do it, better find somebody that you can trust whether you have to go seven states over or you're right there in your hometown all right this car is from this town right here that car over here is from out of state that car right there is from out of state these guys took advice and, and understand that it's hard to have a car restored that you can actually trust somebody to do it so this is what makes the car the old, the new paint job kind of looks semi-restored. This is the original stainless on here, okay? This is all original. 
and we polish this up the best we can polish it but look at the dings and the dents in it all right you can see them okay and that's i mean that's the original stuff if to do this right if you're going to do a uh, super perfect restoration this would be sent out and then it would be restored do you kind of see the difference here i don't know if you can tell like see how this is nice and shiny like chrome but this is dull like aluminum that's because this is stainless steel and these polished um i went ahead and semi restored these i didn't you know go to the extreme where they're flawlessly perfect but i made them to the point where at least it looks like a nice car so all i'm trying to tell you watch your p's and q's count your dollar bills do your investigation before you start spending money on an old car that you're only going to drive maybe once a month am i right the owner already told me before we painted this they told me we're not even going to drive the car we might take it out once a month to go down to the ice to take the kids to go get ice cream they already told me We'll never take it on the highway. We'll never do this. We'll never do that. So that's leading me into the situation that they might not even want to fix the lights. They might not want to do nothing to the electrical. Is there anything you got to say? No. Uh, this is boring. Who cares, Pete? I can't even believe you. What do you mean, who cares? What, what are you talking about? This is not boring. This is for people out there that have a car that they're getting ready to spend twenty thousand plus dollars on, and you're saying this is boring? Come on over here. I want to show you something. Come here. Come here a second, please. Come on over here, please. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you. Come on over here. Come on over right here. Right here. Right here. Come over here, please. No, Pete. I'm not. I want you to. We're talking about this one now. Can you come right over here, please? If we're not going to work, I'm going in the fucking house. Okay, come we're going to be man. working. I'm going to ask you a question. What the fuck? How much money do I got in this? Too fucking much. Exactly. Does it run? Am not I driving very it? very fucking good. Exactly. And no, you don't ever drive it. You never have driven any of the okay, fucking well, stupid you fucking cars you've had. Now you see. So now you now now you're piss me off. And no, I'm not pissing you off. I'm trying to tell people so out good there. For you. I'm trying to tell people out there about restoring their old classic cars. A shit fucking evening. How about that? Who did that? You. Okay, guys, we gotta get back to work. You get the idea. Uh, this is a situation. It's called a domino effect. It's an effect. Okay, it's a situation that says, you know what? Should I really be restoring that old car, or should I go ahead and and just drive it like it is, and possibly, you know, leave it the rat rod shape that it should be in? It's up to you guys. I'm just letting you know. It's hard to get cars restored. And it's hard to find people that are going to do it properly. That aren't going to rip you off and throw you in the trash can. And give you the round instead of a square. What are you doing? I'm looking at something interesting. <laughs> what are you looking at? Trying to find something interesting because this isn't. Is that TikTok? And ain't nobody, ain't nobody that watches that video is going to say it's interesting. It's fucking boring as shit. You're standing there trying to decide something to say. You're fucking bored too. Well, I really appreciate the way that you treat me. When I'm over there trying to teach people the ins and outs on the situation. And all you're doing is standing there trying to think of something more I'm to say. I'm not thinking of nothing. I'm trying to think of something more to say. All I'm trying to do is warn people about the situation. Yeah, you've got 40 videos at least. No, I don't. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, maybe you guys it's called an update, okay? Every car's different. Yeah. You ever heard of that? All it's right. TikTok. Whatever. Oh, look at the little ducks. I love the little ducks. Okay, listen to my friend Pete when it comes down to the situation, because the situation is only going to get worse if you let it. Be wise. And, and have a big bank account because you're going to need it. You're going to need it.
my friend Pete, your friend Pete, trying to tell you this is bullshit. It's bullshit. We got wiring that sucks. It's in my shop. What do I got to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Huh? We're going to go ahead and end this video with my Baja and as you go to bed tonight with your old classic car that you want to restore, think about my friend Pete and what I got to put up with from spending all the money on this car that I spent listening to that right there. You ready to go to work? Are you ready to go to work? Oh my god. Yeah, that's what I thought.